Good afternoon. Welcome here to our Redeemers, Lutheran and Helena. I'm Pastor Trina Johnston. I'm the lead pastor here at our Redeemers. I'll be assisted today by a son of this congregation, Baird Linke, who has recently graduated from seminary himself and is awaiting his first call. Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior, and we welcome those who are joining us from afar via live stream. We're glad that you could enter into this space with us and be with us this afternoon. We're gathered together today to worship, to remember before God to whom we loved, Jim and Vicki, faithful husband and wife, beloved father and mother, grandparents, uncle and aunt, brother and sister, and both of them friends of many. We're here to give thanks for their lives, to entrust them into the arms of their savior and to comfort one another in our grief. So we will turn to God's word. We will pray together. We'll share stories of how they have impacted our lives, touched our lives. We'll sing hymns that inspire and tell of God's love for us. Let us now turn our hearts and our minds to worship as we celebrate two lives well lived and the promises our Savior makes to all those who believe. In a Christian funeral, we rely heavily upon the promises that were made to us in baptism. Because in baptism, God comes to us and embraces us in a way that is permanent. That embrace can't be broken by the changes and chances of life. It can't be shaken off by foolish decisions that we make, by our wayward behavior. In baptism, we are claimed once and for all by God as beloved children of God. And we are promised that there is nothing in all creation that can change that. Nothing can ever separate us from the love of God in Christ. Now, the Lord had always known Vicki and Jim, had in fact known of their uniqueness from time immemorial, had knit them beautifully together in their mother's wombs, had instilled the, the drive that inspired one of them with four little ones to finish a bachelor's degree, <laughs> and had crafted that good sense of humor, an artist's hand in another. But at their baptisms, something new happened. Because all who are baptized, for lack of a better way of describing it, have put on Christ. Like you'd put on a beautiful garment made just for you. I hope you get to see the wedding pictures, like that wedding dress, surely made just for her. In her baptism, Vicki was clothed with Christ. In his baptism, Jim, was clothed in Christ. And so we have the promise that in the day of Christ's coming, Vicki and Jim shall raise to newness of life. Please join me in the acclamation that you'll find in your bulletin. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. We join together in singing the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of life and death, we remember before you today our beloved Vicki and Jim. We thank you for giving them to us to know and to love as companions on our earthly journey. Now give comfort to us who mourn. Aid us so that we may see in death the gate to eternal life. Help us to continue our time on earth in confidence until by your call, we are reunited with those who've gone before us. Through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue now with the readings. The first reading this afternoon is from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, a holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter, but God speaks and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations the Lord has brought on the earth how God makes wars cease to the end of the earth, breaks the bow, shatters the spear, and burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We continue with the hymn, Amazing Grace.
We continue with a time of remembrance from one of the children. If I had half a brain, I wouldn't be following this song. <laughs> um, that was dad's favorite song. And um, he, couldn't cry, he couldn't sing that song without a tear. And um, I know that he and mom just sang it with us. Mom and Dad were about devotion. Devotion to God, to each other, to family, and to friends. They were partners in God's love, and they made sure they shared that with their children. Character traits Mom and Dad tried to instill in us were good manners, um, trustworthiness, independence, and faith in God. If we failed in good manners and trustworthiness, we knew we would, not, we would not have a pleasant return when we got home. If we didn't completely achieve independence, we would know we had each other. But faith in God was not a backup plan. It was the plan. For them, planning for the future was God would take care of it. Uh, Sister Tammy's comment on these four traits was, promptness sure wasn't a trait mom instilled in us. <laughs> and um, that reminded me of something that dad said more than once, and I'm sure many of you have heard this. Dad used to say mom would be late for her own funeral. <laughs> Jim just said not today. Many people who knew those values of mom and dad became extended family. Mom and dad loved to laugh at a simple pun, a bit of irony or a harmless quirk. They were both known for their senses of humor, dad for his laugh, and mom for her quick quips. Mom and dad were bonded in so many ways. Dad would carry mom's purple purse and mom was the Mrs. Claus to dad's Santa. Both of them loved to make people happy. They also loved to sing church songs and popular songs from their younger years. One would start a song and the other would join in. And that is how they came to their conclusion. After mom passed away, Brother Jim was the one to tell Dad. Dad had just been shaved and had breakfast, and Jim came in with his hand on Dad's shoulder. Jim said, Dad, I need you to do your best to give me your attention. I have some bad news for you. Mom passed away last night. And Dad opened his blue eyes, and he looked straight at Brother Jim and said, Oh, no, not my Vicky. Those were his last words. As Jim summarized, they stood together on the foundation of God's strength. But it was mom and God's love that was dad's bridge to heaven. They will be joined forever in love. Thank you, Michelle. And I'm, I'm, I'm a fool if I think that I'm going to be following that. <laughs> Our first reading today is from Paul's first letter to the young church in Corinth. 
And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three. And the greatest of these is love. And from Matthew's gospel, when asked about the basics of the Christian life, Jesus responds, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all of your soul and all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And again, from Paul's letter to those in Corinth, O death, where is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? Please pray with me. God of love, we thank you for the gift of one another's company on a day so heavy with grief. Bless our time together as we bless the memory of your servants, Jim and Vicki. Give us faith, hope, and love in the midst of loss, and draw all those who love Jim and Vicki together in love for one another. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your eyes, our God and our Redeemer. Amen. It does us no good to sugarcoat why we're gathered today. We are here because Jim and Vicki aren't, and their absence is painful. It's clear from a quick look around the room today that these two are deeply, deeply loved and loved a whole lot of people really well. And it's an honor to get to see the fruits of their love. And I hope it's a comfort to all of us to know that Jim and Vicki's love lives on in their children and grandchildren that they raise, the family and friends who miss them. And I'll invite you now to take a moment to look around at the faces of those gathered here, knowing that those of us in this room and gathered from afar are but a fraction of the people whose lives were made so much better for knowing the poor's. And students and colleagues and fellow church members and friends. And I also want to pay attention to where we are gathered. This room is called a sanctuary, and that name is not an accident. This is a place set apart to tell the truth and to be who we are. And I hope that you feel safe here to honor whatever feelings you bring with you, be they sadness or anger or gratitude or peace. God is big enough for all of you and all that you feel. Because God feels it too. Because God loves Jim and Vicki too. The readings that Jim and Vicki's children chose for service today are beautiful and they speak to the power of God's love and promises. And they are true. But I wouldn't blame anyone here for hearing the question, oh death, where is your sting? and having a really specific answer. The sting is here. Death's sting is here. It's in an empty house and in boxes of clothes and in uneaten slices of pie at Thanksgiving. Just because we know that in the arc of eternity it will be okay doesn't mean that it's okay today or that it will be okay tomorrow. But we're not here to make it okay. It's become a bit of a cliche to say that grief is love with nowhere to go. But cliches stick around because they have some truth to them. The grief that we feel at Vicki and Jim's death is rooted in our love for them. And the poor is loved with a brilliance that few can match. Last night I was lucky to get to hear story after story of Jim and Vicki and the way that they loved generously and joyfully their whole lives. And their love is a mark of God in their lives and in everyone's life who came into their orbit. Stories of forgiveness and acceptance, singing and joy, sharing stories and sharing work, and all of these are reflections of God's love in and through Jim and Vicki, whose lives are testaments to what God has always proclaimed. Love changes the world because love changes people. Friends, I want to tell you here and now that you are evidence of that fact. And just as God was present in Jim and Vicki's love, God is present here and now in our grief. God grieves with us even as God welcomes the poor into new life. 
In Jesus, God enters into every aspect of our lives all the way through, including grief, including death. Jesus isn't a tourist passing through life in the world, observing pain and suffering from a distance before moving on. He takes it on because he is God with us. And God with us means us with God. Jesus is with us in grief as he was with Jim and Vicky in death, which also means that Jim and Vicky are with Jesus in new life and the glory of the resurrection. Vicky and her beloved Jim are together in death as they were in life, united in love that passes understanding. And for those of us left behind, filled with love expressed in grief, we're called to follow their example, to be united in love. May the memory of Victoria Poor and James Poor be a blessing to all of us here. And may their love, which by God's grace lives on in each of you, pour out through us in a river that has no end. Amen. together to sing How Great Thou Art, number 856.
may be seated. Let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who declares, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus, full of compassion, console Jim, Michael, Michelle, Tammy, Mark, their spouses, the grandchildren, Kathy, CJ, and Mark, and all who loved Jim and Vicki. Draw near to all who mourn for them and dry the tears of those who weep. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Jesus, you raise the dead. Give to Jim and Vicki life eternal. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Jesus, friend of sinners, you promised eternal life to those who believe. Bring Jim and Vicki to the joys of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, you washed Jim and Vicki clean in baptism, claiming them, adopting them, and forever marking them as yours. Now give them fellowship with all your saints. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Jesus, bright morning star, comfort us in the sorrow at the death of our beloved father and mother, grandparents, sister and brother, aunt and uncle, and faithful friends, Vicki and Jim. May good memories of them ease our grief, and may our faith be a source of strength in the days of head. Lord, in your mercy. God of all grace, we give you thanks, because by his death, Jesus destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because Christ lives, we shall live also. And that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come shall ever be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share signs of that good peace with one another. You may be seated. We turn now to the communion liturgy. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he returns in glory to gather to him all the faithful. We join together in the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. Christ has set this table with more than enough for all. Please come and be fed in Christ. All are welcome. A few words of instruction as we do this. We're going to have one station up here today as you come forward. Someone will be holding a bowl like this. It has wafers in it. And then we also have gluten-free wafers available. As you come forward, if you want gluten-free, let your server know. And we'll get you that as well. Then you'll come to someone bearing a tray that has little glasses in it. The ones that are red are wine. The ones that are white are grape juice. And finally, we'll have someone with a basket for you to put the empty things into it. Um, if you'd like to come forward and not eat but receive a blessing instead, come forward like this. That will be the sign to the servers that you'd like a blessing. Um, we also can bring communion out to you. If there are folks that uh, it would be difficult for them to come forward, we'll be watching and we will come out and serve you at the end. Our Redeemer's Lutheran is a member congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. In this church, we think of this as Christ's table. It's not Trina's table. It's not our Redeemer's Lutheran Church table. This is Christ's table. And at Christ's table, all are welcome. Please come and be fed.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and unto life eternal. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together in the hymn, Jesus Loves Me. Let us commend Victoria Ann to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend our beloved Vicky. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of all the saints. Amen. Rest eternal grant her, Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. Amen. Let us commend James Philip to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend our beloved Jim. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of all the saints. Amen. Rest eternal grant him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. And now, friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace in the name, in the name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. I'll invite you to stand for our postlude. We'll be singing This Little Light of Mine as we send out Jim and Vicki.